In this video, let's have a closer look at the variance of the residuals in a time series model, which is also going to be the variance of the error terms. Now, over here we have two possible sources of errors when it comes to the time series. One of them is because the error term is unknown, so that's the same as in the cross-sectional data. The reason we have error terms is because we do not know them. We do not know what other factors are going to influence our sales and we cannot account for that. So one of them is because we have random factors. Random factors that are unknown. Random factors that are unknown. That are unknown, which are the error terms. These are the error terms, which so is call it UT. And the other reason we can have differences between the actual future values and the values that we predict based on our data is because the data that we predict, the slope coefficients that we predict in our regression model might not be accurate. It might not be very well representative of what's going to happen in the future. Because remember, we're using past to predict the future. But maybe something changed across time that we did not encounter in our regression model. So these slope coefficients are not going to be very accurate. So um, over here, we're going to have wrong estimations or basically inaccurate estimations of beta one and beta zero, or in our case, alpha and beta. Inaccurate, inaccurate estimations, estimations of alpha and beta, alpha and beta based on our data in our sample. Now, with that said, uh, can we say that the variance that we're going to find over here is going to be the variance of the error term? Can we say that that is the most uh, accurate representation? Yes, we can if, if the variance is going to happen mainly due to those error terms. So if the variance in our, um, if, if the variance over here is going to happen mainly because the error term causes it, if this variance is going to be much greater than the variance that's going to happen due to the inaccurate estimators, then what we can say is that the variance of the residuals is going to represent the variance of the error terms in the model. This is going to represent the variance of the error terms in our time series, in time series. In other words, if we want to take the standard error of this regression model, we would take the square root of that variance. It's going to be very analogous. If we take the square root of that, it's going to be very analogous, analogous with the standard error of the regression model in cross-sectional data. So these are very similar concepts, except over here, we can calculate it directly, the standard error of the regression, and we know that it's based on uh, observations that we actually have in the sample. In the time series case, we have two sources. We have two sources of variation that's going to cause those residuals to vary across time. And if we can have, uh, if we can have a confirmation, so to speak, if we, if we know that that variance happens due to the error terms mainly, then that's going to be a very accurate estimate of the standard error of the regression, the square root of the variance, because that's what the standard error is, is the square root of the variance. Hope this makes sense. And we are done.